and uh, they had the lemonade stand there, and Marin said they like made like fifty dollars. Good morning. Welcome to my channel. I'm Jennifer and this is A Country Life. It was a waffle morning and you know what that means when kids get into the kitchen right away in the morning. There's definitely a little bit of a mess to clean up. So I'm just getting ready here for a big freezer meal prep day. Good morning, guys. Mm -hmm. Okay, here, I don't need to put those up there because it's going to make a lot of a lot of crumbs. Mm -hmm. Crumbs everywhere. Mm -hmm. Today is actually going to be prepping a whole lot of ingredients that are going to go into the freezer meals. Emily and I have some pretty lofty goals of getting, I think I counted upwards of 40 freezer meals done. And I know with her toddlers and our uh, ballroom dance date night <laughs> with Joe, that day is going to go by really, really fast. So I thought anything I could do to get some things prepped, make it easy on us, uh, would be a benefit. was an event <laughs> wasn't it Peter yeah we did all different things we put the cold wet washcloth next to us to try to absorb some of the scent uh, Peter got goggles Maria she has goggles on over there it is just onion 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 I and the onions weren't overly warm when we started I mean they had been kind of sitting by a by a wall overnight which was cold um, anyway you sometimes you just can't escape that onion uh, like you just can't escape the onion and the, and the tearing and all of that here's all the onion that I have that is a whole lot of onion that was three that was nine pounds of onions there uh, so we have that all done I pretty much figure that like one cup minced I would call this almost minced onion will be about an onion. Good morning, Joe. He's over here stealing our carrots, huh? Yeah. That's all right. They're delicious. Doesn't delicious mean thumbs up? Yes. It's it's delicious with a thumbs down. All right, we'll go with it. Hey! Making a little carrot forest. Mm -hmm. Carrot forest. All right, so let me look at my... <laughs> oh, that's nice. They cut up so well. is a membership for those who want to make freezer meals, <laughs> want to do it quickly, want to do it efficiently, and want to have things already tried and true and ready to go 
for them. That is what Freezer Fit is meant for. And Freezer Fit already has 1,000 recipes ready to go. The recipes have already been tested and figured out so that they are going to work for you. There's nothing worse than trying out a freezer meal recipe and it just not working or maybe adapting one and finding out that you have to uh, adapt it yet again. Freezer Fit has already done that for you. Freezer Fit has a private community where freezer meal enthusiasts can share what has worked, they can ask questions, and, and just basically talk all things freezer meal prep. One of the things that I like best is that I can search the recipes according to diet, cuisine, cooking method, protein. I really like the feature of um, searching by cooking method because all of the meals that Emily and I had set out to do today were all casserole style meals uh, which are great but sometimes it's nice to have a little variety in the freezer so I thought I have never done anything instant pot related and I wanted to do some instant pot recipes so I went right to freezer fit clicked on instant pot recipes and up came a whole list of delicious looking recipes. Once I bring them out of the freezer, they're gonna be prepared in the Instant Pot, which is really a bonus because I've been really using my Instant Pot quite a bit lately. You guys know at first I was a little like, oh, I'm not really sure, but now I use it for so many things. It's just great. And to have some freezer meals to use there is gonna be an added bonus. Also the fact that Freezer Fit allows you to download and print your own auto-generated shopping lists and labels. I think that is just fantastic. And they're all customized exactly for your family size because you can put in if you wanna make this two servings or four servings or 10 or 12. We're doing freezer meals, so I was able to put in that we wanted to make 24 servings <laughs> of these and it auto-generated everything that I was gonna need for that. Freezer Fit helps you to save time by having everything at one website ready to go, ready to print, ready for your shopping, ready for everything. It just, it saves so much time. Learning to freezer cook and learning to do it efficiently also is a huge time saver in your kitchen and everybody needs to save time in the kitchen. For this Instant Pot Salsa Verde Chicken, I'm starting with boneless, skinless chicken thighs. Chicken thighs are great for in freezer meals. Well, chicken thighs are just great all the way around, aren't they? Because they're just so tender and juicy all the time. I brought up six pints of my homemade salsa verde, a can of green chilies, garlic cloves, a little jalapeno pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, and ground cumin. It's super easy, but it's just gonna be, I, I am so looking forward to putting this meal in the Instant Pot and prepping this up for my family. And you guys, all of these ingredients smell so good. There are a few ingredients that are that will be used on the day of cooking for this Instant Pot Salsa Verde. And those ingredients are some fresh green onions, fresh cilantro, a fresh lime, and then flour or corn tortillas. Those things are all pretty easy to keep up, keep around. And if you've seen now in the grocery store, they actually have uh, the dried cilantro in the spice, spice aisle, which I think is fantastic for something like this when you're not really sure exactly what day you're gonna wanna make this and you wanna have that cilantro on hand, then don't worry about the fresh cilantro, just use the dried cilantro. All right, so I like to just kind of knead my um, my bags a little bit before I put them into the freezer, and I like to lay them flat. They stack easier, they thaw faster if they're thinner, and so far these Ziploc brand are nice bags. These are nice. Freezer Fit is giving away a free cookbook when you attend one of their freezer cooking classes. The class is 30 minutes and will teach you how to put together 10 freezer meals in under 30 minutes. I'll include the link in the description box below as well as in the pinned comment. So head on over there, check out the free class, and learn something new. There's always something new to be learned when it comes to putting together freezer meals. Thanks to Freezer Fit for sponsoring today's video. I will be sharing a couple more freezer fit recipes, um, not right this second, but when we put together the ground beef, ground venison uh, recipes, I'll be having two more freezer fit recipes. And those are, get ready for this, air fryer, healthy beef taquitos, as well as instant pot, easy lasagna.
very excited for both of those recipes to give those a try. So if you're interested in watching me put those together, then you're going to want to stick around in this video because those are coming up in just a little bit. Another thing that I'm putting together today is my homemade taco seasoning. That's just going to make the assembly of some of these meals go a lot quicker on Saturday. So I need chili powder, cumin. Oh, I keep the recipe right here. Uh, kosher salt, which I'm a little low on. We can just use regular salt. It'll be okay. That's it, right? One, two, three, four. Chili oh, I forgot about the, the garlic and garlic. I like to mix it up in something a little bit bigger than a pint jar just so I have room to mix it and then I can pour it in here. If you do a half a batch, like a half of a recipe of what I'm doing here, you can mix it right in your jar. That works great. All right, I'm going to do a half a batch today because I'm not completely out of taco seasoning, you can see. And yeah, that's just what I'm gonna do. things to do on this prep day here and that is to make 10 pounds of mashed potatoes and then also uh, Maria and I are going to put together a whole bunch of pie crust so that's going to be next I don't know how many batches we're going to do we want to make four we're probably going to make two I think we're going to do three batches of pie crust and the reason is because whatever's left over I can just freeze in little discs and put them in the well, put them in the freezer <laughs> and I can bring those out for making pies at a later date. morning everybody we're back at the freezer meal this is like the big day this is the day where we're gonna put all of these recipes together and if you've been wondering why we're doing freezer meals <laughs> why are we doing freezer meals Emily there's gonna be another baby yay there's gonna be another baby we're so excited and you guys it is coming up so fast it's just a like two and a half weeks or something before there's gonna be a baby. We're so excited. Um, what we're putting together here next is going to be the Instant Pot Easy Lasagna. We're gonna do one recipe for us today, so we're not even gonna freeze it. As soon as our Instant Pots over there are um, empty from the chicken, 
then we're going to make one for lunch but it is only nine o'clock so we have a little time here we're gonna uh, get our bags prepped here for the other one and this is a nice one because it starts with uncooked hamburger i know that sometimes people will say why put together a freezer meal um with such like simple uncooked ingredients and things like that when you could just easily put it together the day of sometimes it's just nice to know that you don't have to think about the recipe um you just know that there's something ready to go in the freezer. The day before, you're like, oh, we're gonna do this recipe. I just pull it out from the fridge and then I know tomorrow I can pop it into my Instant Pot. This one does require a little bit of effort the day of. You do have to like turn your Instant Pot onto saute for a little bit and then, uh, then bring it up to pressure do the cook the meat and then you then you have to add in some more water and the pasta you know so it has a, a few steps but at least if you're going to get them out once might as well make four recipes at once then it just saves kind of those those couple of minutes that it takes to do that said so let's put these on first oh. But then it has all like the extra it instructions It has all the on. extra instructions. Oh, so like they all inch the pot instruction yeah, part. Yeah, it's oh. all right there. Isn't that great? Oh, that, now that is smart. Maria, if you did want to help, what you can do what? is you can add like all the spices. To, so you, to each bag. So you add the same spice. Where's the directions? Right here? Wait, like, and probably it'll start like that running. much. Yeah. Your eyes out. And we have a ton of onions. So okay. We have a bowl like this full. Oh. We're putting together the beefalata recipe, and this is on page, what does that say, Emily? 19. Page 19 in cookbook number one. This is a staple for us when we do freezer meals because just everybody loves this one so much. Uh, it's hamburger, cooked hamburger. We threw in the onion, enchilada sauce, rice, and cheese. Do we usually add in a little... I guess we'll taste it. And sometimes we add in a little salt and pepper um, or a little bit of taco seasoning works well too. Does it say that in the recipe over there? Sometimes you'll add a can of refried beans. Yeah. yeah. So this is, it's just super forgiving. This recipe, if you like it more taco flavored, I mean, you can add in salsa, hot salsa if you wanted. You could add in jalapenos. You could add in, what else could you add in, Maria? Um, what could you add in? Anything you want. Right. If you don't have enchilada sauce, I've done it with tomato like, soup before and taco seasoning. There's just, it's if really you forgiving. If like a flavor, try to make it happen. There you go. If you like a flavor, make it happen. So Warren and I had to run quickly. Um, actually, we went to a funeral visitation is what we ended up doing. Uh, so... While we were gone, Emily put together, I think probably Emily and maybe even Maria, I don't know, they put together the beefaladas. So all that mix that you saw before, they rolled it into tortillas and then just stacked them in here. Emily has these wrapped so nicely with saran wrap along with foil. That's what we do. And then we just know that when we take them out of the freezer, we take off the foil, take off the saran wrap, and then we usually will put the foil back on if it needs foil on or or off. If I were to start the beefaladas from frozen, I would take the foil off, the saran off, put the foil back on, put them in the oven at 350, and then bake them. I mean, I'd probably give it at least 20, well, if they're frozen, I may even start it a little bit cooler of a temperature and then let them bake for quite a while check them after maybe a half an hour to see if they're soft then take the foil off turn up the temp to 350 and then i would let them bake until they get a little bit crunchy on the edges that's kind of how we like them is that the edges are a little bit crunchy um and then if you cut them in half they almost are sort of like a finger food lots and lots of pans mm -hmm. so we have two pans of nine those are going to be for me and then we have three pans of six and Emily is those will be for Emily so lots and lots of beefaladas going down here today
Hamburger pie is happening right now. The recipe in the cookbook, this is cookbook two on page 18, calls for tomato soup, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, it calls for tomato soup, but you know what? We are going to, I like to change up my recipes, you guys. So this time we're going to be doing brown gravy, and rather than just green beans, and you know what, I think we will, do you think we need more green beans, Emily? Do you think we should open up some green beans from down in the basement and put some green beans mm -hmm. in too? What do you think? I mean, I think this is you good. You think that's good? Like, okay. I will, yeah. All right, then let's go with it. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, what is that? It's like a carrot <laughs> thing. A carrot thing. We're gonna there put we the go. brown gravy over the top, mashed potatoes, sprinkle a little cheese, mm -hmm. and then do the same thing. Saran wrap, foil, label. So we just finished up with lunch. We actually, instead of making four of the Instant Pot Easy Lasagnas, rather than making four of those as a freezer meal, what we did is we did one, we made, we made it for lunch, and it was very good. And how I know it's very good is because Maria said three or four times, this is really good, Mom. <laughs> so we know it's really good. And Emily thought it was good. I thought it was good. Warren said it was good. Mm -hmm. Peter said it was good. Um, Joe ate it, and he's not a big noodle guy, but if it's in kind of sauce already mixed in, he'll go for it. So anyway, all right, lunch is done. We've kind of been resetting a little bit here before because we had a ton of big dishes, but look at this. We just have a lot going on. Emily is at the sink. She's waiting for me to bring this over, which is the mixture, or at least the beginnings of the mixture for the spaghetti bake. All of the ground venison has been added to this. There may be a tiny bit of ground beef um, in here as well. We've kind of, you know, we've just kind of been mixing the meat here and there, uh, but mostly this is ground venison, and this is the mixture. This has the green peppers and the onions, and it has all the diced tomatoes, and it has all of the seasonings in it, I think, already. Right, Emily? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I added the oregano. Yeah. And then the... Um and what about salt? Did we have to add salt and pepper? No. I'm going to look at the instructions here. So here's the recipe. This was the recipe. Um, it doesn't say anything about salt and pepper, but I probably, I think I should. So it is taking a lot to be in the house here today. It's so nice outside. It's, well, it seems like it's actually nicer outside than the temperature is reading. It's saying 55. We have the windows open. We can hear the kids playing outside. That's so nice. I actually just drained some mushrooms right there. I have them sitting uh, because with the spaghetti bake, I thought, you know, I know Emily likes mushrooms, so we'll let her lay her mushrooms up in hers. Yes, Peter? We need Emily. Okay, Emily, they need you. Doing chalk. Yeah, this is a lot of meat for four pans. So we may, well, it's gonna be meaty. It is gonna be meaty. The original recipe, you guys, calls for a pound of hamburger. We actually have almost, right? Like mm -hmm. one and three fourths pounds of hamburger yeah. per, just because, you know, I don't know. I just feel like if you're feeding more than three people, a pound of hamburger does not seem like very much. But we have all of our spaghetti here. We have the mushrooms. I'm just getting started here. Okay. I need to, I'd go more. More? Yeah, this, I for thing. sure. And this is the cream of mushroom soup and water mixture. So it's one can of cream of mushroom soup with a quarter cup of water. And this is what goes over the top. When it bakes, it the cream soup kind of like sinks down in and it just, yeah, that looks good. That looks good, Emily, just like that. And if the top layer ends up a little bit thinner, that's okay because we know that the it's yeah that the bottom layer is underneath. I remember being very pregnant picking strawberries. Did I do oh, yeah, yeah, it's June. Here? Yeah, you did two okay. cups on that. Um, okay. That's all right. That's why um, it's really good when you're doing freeze your meals to make things that are very forgiving, I feel. So like if you get a little more of something or a little less of something, it's not the end of the world. A little more meat, a little less meat, a little more soup, a little less soup, not the end of the world. We realized after putting them in the pans that we probably should have done these in the deep dish 
foil pans because they are very full. Uh, we're going to not use that one. We're going to oh. use the shaky cheese for this one. Okay. Um, we're going to do shaky Parmesan cheese goes over the top of this. And then, did you use all the liquid that was in there and mm -hmm. everything? Okay. And we're just kind of talking through what we're going to do if we're going to spray the saran wrap so it doesn't stick to the soup mixture or if we should just maybe double foil it and spray the foil. Maybe that. I, I guess either one. I think we can probably spray either one. And so then it's about a quarter cup or so of Parmesan cheese on top. I say just, I'd even go more, but I, I like I like the Parmesan cheese. So yeah, I think that probably looks like a quarter cup. Deeper foil for these in the future. I'm gonna write that note on, mm -hmm. on the recipe. We are at the point of the day where I am going to have a drink of wine from a measuring cup. <laughs> Emily overmeasured the wine. We're making the roux, roux. the sauce yeah. for the chicken tetrazzini. Yes, and it called for like white wine. And she was pouring and we were yak, yak, yakking. And all of a sudden she's like, wait a minute, we're gonna run out of wine. And I was like, well, we shouldn't because we only need two cups and we opened up a brand new bottle. <laughs> and so anyway, here it is. She was gonna try to pour it back into the bottle. Well, that wasn't gonna work. So here it goes. Cheers. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, cheers. Look at that. There's even a little flower residue on the cup. Okay, this is thick. All right, well, that's not bad for cheap wine. I literally bought the cheapest wine. That is very thick. Okay, I need yeah, to stir mine. Emily's just doing the taste test. Are you gonna stick your finger in there somewhere? And Sure. We don't mind, we're all family. Mm -hmm. We just added a it's tad bit more salt. I She's like, I think better. I need a little bit more salt. So we added a little bit more salt on top of the chicken uh, bouillon granules, but yep. yeah, tastes very, it tastes really yummy. Tastes good. Now, what we would do is if I was making this like right away and not freezing it, I would add all the cooked spaghetti right to the pot. And then I'd mix it around and then I would pour it into a baking dish, top it with some more Parmesan cheese and put it in the oven like that. But we have a lot. We have this pot and we have this pot here. And so we're just going to get our pans ready and then load up all the pans with the pasta and then just pour this over and top it with a little bit of Parmesan cheese so it's ready to bake. All right, we have the chicken tetrazzini's done. We went a little bit lighter on the Parmesan cheese on top because it, it didn't just seem like it needed a whole cup to us. Mm -hmm. And we do that a lot. We were saying, like Emily was saying before, yeah. she's like, everything seems to be growing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we had two big pots of this, which actually worked out all right. We thought it was gonna be too much, but it seems to be pretty good. I did use a little bit or I did use some of the rice that we had cooked up because we had extra. And the last little bit of the um, chicken tetrazzini, I used the last little bit of that um, in here. And it looks green because the lighting all of a sudden got kind of funny, but that I think will, I'm just gonna foil this and I might make it tomorrow or maybe we'll have it later tonight. I'm not really sure, but it's just, just kind of the leftovers. Just well, this is one of our favorite meals. Yeah, it's one of our favorites, right? Mm-hmm. Whether you do the cheesy potatoes just like this, you know what I forgot to get? What? The cornflakes. Oh, I cannot <laughs> get <done>. my brown. <laughs> oh, it's done already? No, are we done? No. Oh, this is going to be all rewarded. I don't know what's going on. Is the red button going? Yeah, it's still okay. going. I didn't know if you wanted to be done oh, or not. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I no, thought no, this no. was just like a quick film, like the thing. Okay. No. <laughs> Restart. Restart. I completely forgot to get the cornflakes. Um, we can still freeze it. It's Which just... is fine. We'll just put on the tin foil cornflakes needed. Yeah. And then Which... at, you know, when we're, um, yeah. when we're ready to bake it, we'll just make sure we buy cornflakes. You'll, you'll just make sure you have cornflakes on hand when you've got like a newborn yeah. and a be totally good. and a toddler. Yeah, I'll totally just remember. You'll just always make sure you have some cornflakes ready in case you want to make this. Shockingly, meal. I do actually have cornflakes right now. 
<laughs> which is such an odd cereal for me to have because I made cornflake clusters the other weekend. Oh. Um, we may actually have a couple, a little bit of cornflakes too right now, but not enough for all of these. All right, no. well, I'm going to get the butter into this and then, hmm, that's not quite ready. And then we're going to mix in the potatoes. We're just waiting for, the, oh, and I am, we're both pretty much ready for this day to be done. I mean, it's early. It's only three o'clock. It's only three. But yeah, yeah, we're getting we're getting to that point where little things are like I'm stirring too fast and splashing. All those and it's a mess things. around here. It is a mess around here. We're gonna we're gonna keep that one private though. Am I even in this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Emily! <laughs> Emily's laughing at me. This is how filming always goes. Um. Yeah, she opened up the microwave before and she's like, oh, I'm like, oh, don't worry about it. It's fine. And then I opened up the microwave. I was like, oh, my God. We had a big explosion in there. So that's going to need to be cleaned. On a side note, when it comes to cleaning, things like that, I will add to the kids list and or not really to their list, but to a list. And then I'll put like two dollars or three dollars or something like that to it. I know Emily's like, what? How much did it used to be? It's gonna say three dollars to wipe out the microwave. It used to be two dollars to mow the grass. <laughs> you walked away with a with one dollar. You were parched, exhausted, and sunburnt. <laughs> but no, you can get three dollars to scrub out the microwave now. Times have changed. Come on, isn't that clearly? We say times clearly. have changed. Clearly, but I I put that on the list about a week ago that the kids could earn some extra dollars to clean out the microwave. No one has taken me up on it yet, so... I'll clean up the microwave for $3. <laughs> We're doing something a little bit different this time with the cheesy potatoes, just in case we want this to be kind of like a meal with a little bit of meat. You know, especially like with Emily having a newborn, she might want to just pop one of these in and be like, you know what, this is supper tonight. <laughs> and everyone will be a little bit happier probably if there's a little meat involved in it. So we're just, I just got these packages of farmland smoked spiral ham slices and pieces. It was a lot cheaper to do it this way than it was to do like the little individual diced ham that's like all perfectly sized and everything. And so yeah, we, we went this route. We just put a little bit of ham in the bottom of each pan and then we're gonna top it with the potatoes and we'll have to do we'll the cornflakes to um, mm -hmm. when, when we put it in the oven. So it is five minutes to four and we still have, what? Oh, and we still have a number of recipes that we wanted to do. We had 10 recipes on our list and here's what we ended up getting done the instant pot easy lasagna the instant pot salsa verde chicken beef aladas spaghetti bake chicken noodle tetrazzini bake cheesy potatoes with ham shepherd's pie or hamburger pie beef potato pie whatever you call it that those are the things that we got done so let me just count that up that's one two three, four, five, <laughs> six, and seven. So we ended up getting seven of the 10 recipes made, which actually, Emily, it was sounding like we had a lot more to go, but it, we did seven. Seven. We did seven whole recipes and almost everything was times four. I think we had one that was a times three, but otherwise everything was a times four. It was a whole lot, a lot of, that's all I know. And we were just saying that we think that we are biting off more than we can chew often. Like each time we do these freezer meals, it seems like it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and yeah, just bigger and bigger and bigger. Stay tuned because I will be back. Um, this time it won't be with Emily, but over the course of the next couple days, I am going to continue uh, with the last three freezer meals so that we can get everything on our list done. And I just want to make sure I use up all the ingredients that I purchased for this as well. All right, Maria is organizing all of our food here. I did run in because really the only thing I needed was to get milk and butter. So I did get six pounds of it's butter, more. six gallons of milk, it's because more. I still have a little bit of the freezer meal prep to do 
and some things I just ran out of. I did end up picking up some more groceries because there were things that we needed. Let's start with some paper plates. These were at 4.9 cents a plate. The other plates that I had been getting for a while have gone up to 5.2 or 5.3 cents a plate. So that's why I went with these this time. They had this big like microfiber flip mop. And I thought that this was a great option now that we have, I can't say hardwood, but you know, we've got like the LVP and this would be a lot easier for cleaning underneath beds, I thought. Some fruit snacks. One of these bars of milk chocolate here. This was only 20 some cents an ounce, whereas the Hershey's milk chocolate bars were 69 point something cents an ounce. This was $1.29 for this one bar, and a package of six regular size Hershey's was $6.40 something. We're going to have a campfire for lunch today. Um, that's like just not even part of this video or anything because this is supposed to be freezer meal cooking you guys. I knew that the kids would want to roast some marshmallows and have s'mores. So I bought one bar. Everybody can have a s'more and we'll be good. Six pounds of butter. Butter was crazy expensive right now. So between the butter at almost four dollars a pound that's twenty four dollars and then another eighteen dollars for the milk. That was a big chunk of the ninety two or ninety three dollars I think. I went with these potatoes this time because all of their russets, the bags were all moldy. That was kind of pretty disgusting. Some celery, two bags of salad. We will have to have this salad tomorrow. I got each bag for 79 cents. I did pick up for I think these were 95 cents or maybe even a little bit less than that. Two cucumbers, some strawberries at 219 for the pound. Bananas, which now I should have remembered. Quick Trip has bananas right now for 29 cents a pound. I should have gone there because these were probably 49 cents a pound. Cuties, I didn't look at the price, but they were on their end cap where they have all the specials. The Pink Lady Apples, that's what I bought last time, and they're already gone. And I think I just bought those maybe five days ago or something. And this time they were on sale for $2.79 for this three pound bag. I also picked up some cereal for the kids. Balance, frosted shredded wheat, corn flakes, cinnamon crunch squares, honey grams, and one box of graham crackers. We'll use those for the s'mores today. I also picked up one bag of the tortilla chips because we always have salsa and I also have a little bit left of a like salsa queso in the fridge and I'd like to get that used up too. And what better way to use that up than to get some chips. All right, that was everything besides the six gallons of milk. Like I said, butter and milk for freezer meals. And let's get going on those meals now. point I'm making a roux for the chicken pot pies. The goal here is to make chicken, to make four of them. And so in here I have one and a third cups of butter, one and a third cups of the diced onion, and, I'm, and one and a third cups of flour. I melted the butter first with the onion, and now I'm going to turn up the heat just a bit. I want this flour butter mixture to get bubbly. It's starting to bubble up a little bit on the edges. I'm gonna get some chicken stock poured in. So that's four cups. And then I need and another three cups. I'm gonna turn my heat up a little bit. I wanna bring this to a boil and let this thicken. Uses his motorcycle. So I need to just double check all my ingredients to make sure I'm actually getting this times the right way. And that's also a teaspoon of pepper, a couple pinches, there's a pinch, there's a pinch, pinch, pinch. Four pinches of poultry seasoning. I'm going to go help Maria with some math and let this come to a boil. All right, this is almost boiling here with the milk and everything in it. Once it boils, I need to cook it for one minute, stirring the whole time so it doesn't stick to the bottom. If I'm buying all the ingredients exactly for chicken pot pie, I will buy 
um, a 10 ounce bag of frozen peas and carrots. But you know what? This is one of those recipes again that you can just kind of mix or match whatever your favorite vegetables are. So I have a quart of green beans. I have 12 ounces of frozen carrots. And I also have this can of mixed vegetables. And I thought I was gonna do all of that, but that's actually gonna be too much. So I'm just gonna do the uh, carrots and the beans. There's already onion in here. All right, I'm just stirring for one minute. I started measuring out my chicken. I need 12 cups. We like it to be very uh, pat, quite packed with chicken. So I do three cups of chicken per uh, chicken pot pie. I drained the green beans really well. What's the name of this lesson? Ready. I'm gonna get this stirred really well, turn off the heat. And since I will be freezing these, I can let this cool a bit before I pour it into my pie crusts. But this is super meaty with nice big chunks. That's the nice thing about chicken thighs is that the meat will come off in really big chunks and it makes for a really, really delicious chicken pot pie. I'm starting with three scoops per pie and then I'll assess if I need some more in each one. When I make this for the freezer, I'm usually using uh, the aluminum pie plates and those are always a little bit, uh, like the disposable ones, and those are a little bit shallower than say the, the deeper dish Pyrex ones. And so sometimes I find that I, if I make four batches of chicken pot pie filling, I might be able to even fill up to five chicken pot pies. So we'll see. I have enough crust if I need to make another. But this one looks like it could have some more. Yeah. Doesn't it? Yeah. Maybe that one over there. Okay, we have enough, don't we, to do like a whole other pie. All right, well, let's get these crusts put on here, and then what we'll do is I will just quick roll out some more pie crust and make one more. I'm going to put these onto a baking sheet put them in the freezer to freeze, and then I will package them in a freezer bag, a labeled freezer bag. That's what I'll do. All right, so I have the same pot as the chicken pot pie, and now I'm going to make creamy chicken and wild rice soup. This is basically pot pie is a soup, <laughs> basically, except there's rice in it. I'm starting the same way. I'm melting some butter. As soon as this melts, I'm going to put in the flour. Now, originally, Emily and I had planned that we were going to do this times two so that she could have a batch, I could have a batch. But guess what? This actually makes a pretty big batch. It starts, it makes, um, I use 14 cups of water in this. So it makes a big batch of soup. So what I'm going to do is save half for us. We're going to have it for supper tonight. And then I'm going to freeze the other half for her. And I'm also changing this up just a tiny bit. Rather than using wild rice, I have brown and white rice left from um, all the rice that I made for the beef aladas. And so I'm just gonna use that. I know it would be really, really good with, with the wild rice and I have it over there. I just don't want this rice that I have to go to waste. So that's what we're doing. We're just changing it up. Let's get this flour in here. Stir that around. I'm gonna turn the heat up just a little bit. I just want this to get all bubbly. All right, so I need 14 cups of water. That's four. It doesn't have any bubble. I know, anything. it is really nice. It's like purple. I broke my tripod before. 14. So now I'm trying to use it. <laughs> okay, so that was one tablespoon. Two, three, and a half teaspoon of pepper. Bring it over here so I can take the steak. So one cup of celery. You also no. need a cup no, I don't want that one. of carrots. It's going to be half of that. Looks like rice. Will I be able to fool my family? <laughs> no. 
as I'm making this taquito mix, it is so much like my beefaladas recipe. I, I just, I didn't even realize that, but I'm still excited to use this. Um, I like the idea that this has in the cauliflower rice and it looks just like rice and I just tasted it. It tastes just like rice. Each of these will be rolled individually in a corn tortilla with a little bit of cheese. I will freeze these uh, individually and then these will become an air fryer uh, meal. The best way to do something like this in the air fryer then will be to spray them with a little bit of vegetable spray or brush them with butter before putting them into the air fryer. So I am finally wrapping up here the last stages of the freezer meal prep and I just wanted to show you the these are the air fryer healthy beef taquitos. Some have split, so I'm not sure how to get away from that with corn tortillas. I did what it said, and look at how perfect some of them are, and then some of them, for whatever reason, it's like they just split right open. Uh, I am still, we're still going with it. Peter actually made four of these the night I was wrapping them up, put them into the air fryer from like a completely thawed state, and they were good. Warren thought that they needed a little, he said they needed more flavoring. He sprayed oil on them, like just vegetable spray, put them in the air fryer. I think they were in for what, 10 minutes, Peter? Yeah. 10 or 11 minutes, and they actually were really good. We just kind of nibbled on them because we were just trying to try them, but like I said, maybe a little bit more seasoning. If we got out the sour cream and salsa and dipped them like we would normally with like taquitos you get from the store, I think that that would make a big difference. Okay, let me get these into the freezer bags here. And just remember, this is the last of my freezer fit meals that I put together. And I'm really, really loving the fact that they um, have all of the directions ready to print, ready to put right onto your Ziploc bags. I love how easy they have been to put together. And so if you click the first link in the description box below, that will take you to Freezer Fit where you can take a free class learning how to make 10 freezer meals in 30 minutes, I think it is. And if you stay to the end of that video, you will then be able to uh, download a free cookbook, a Freezer Fit cookbook. So um, lots of benefits to you from that. And thanks to Freezer Fit for sponsoring today's video. This has been a fun one. We have so many meals in the freezer. I have these taquitos as well as, what else do I have? And the pot pies. I was able to make six total pot pies, five for the freezer, one that we made right away that night for supper. And Emily, last night, I had to uh, stop by her place and she was just like, I am so excited to make these. She said, I, I want to wait until baby comes to make them, but she's like, it's hard. She said, I just want to start cooking these because they're going to taste so good. All right, let me get these uh, packaged up. It is the eighth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we will. Probably. Aren't they so cute? They're so cute. You don't think they're cute, Maria? I love the fact that we can just take out as many as we want. So this would be perfect if I have some leftovers for lunch one day, but it's not quite enough, or maybe it's some leftovers that maybe the kids, you know, aren't super fond of. They could pull out a few taquitos for them, pop them in the air fryer, and in, and in what does it say here? 10 to 15 minutes, they will have a little lunch for themselves. Can I do one right now? 